Welcome to this seventh Sunday of Easter. Alleluia! The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's the last time we'll get to say that as the opening to our service for quite some time. Because this is the last Sunday of the Easter season. Next week we celebrate the Feast of the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes in great power and empowers us to be God's witnesses to the church. We start to hear that theme a little bit this week in the reading from Acts. We also hear the story of Jesus' ascension, his departure from us on earth, leaving us to be the very body of Christ in the current moment. And we also hear a story from John's Gospel that Jesus promises to be connected to us, that we will not be left alone, but will always be connected to God. And connection is the theme of the service today, as you'll see um, as we read through these different um, readings and uh, sing some songs and uh, hear a sermon. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for being with us today. Confessing sin before God is not something that brings me great excitement, at least not on the surface. This simple paper chain reminds me of how I feel connected to God through prayer, specifically our prayer confession. For me, Confession is a vital aspect of growing closer to God. Just as taking responsibility for how I hurt others is critical to the well-being of any relationship in my life. And when I hurt others through things done and left undone, I weaken this chain. But by admitting this to God and praying and knowing others are praying with me, it helps me to feel more connected to God 
It helps me feel like my chain is strengthened and will keep it from breaking. It's through God's love and mercy that I store up the strength in my chain. It is by the grace of God that I can appreciate this love and mercy and it empowers me to love others as God loves me. So join me now and let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, can, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Good morning. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory, everlasting. Amen. Sing to God, kingdoms of the world. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides in the sky, the ancient sky. Listen to him and shout with, with a mighty roar. Proclaim God's power. His majesty is over Israel. His might is in the skies. How awesome is God as he comes from his sanctuary. The God of Israel. He gives strength and power to his people. Praise, Praise God. God! In our first Bible lesson today, we're going to discover some pretty important elements of the story of our faith. What happens after Jesus died and rose again? Sometimes at Family Chapel, our children will ask me, where is Jesus now? And today, we are going to discover the next part of this story, if you listen closely. Another important part of this story, as Jesus continues his journey and invites the disciples to continue theirs, he gave the disciples work to do. Jesus invites the disciples to be witnesses. And to be a witness is to be someone that tells a story of what happened, what they saw. If you watched our Ascension Day service, we used a paper airplane to represent the way in which we can be witnesses. We can share our story, the way in which we can tell the story that God has worked in our lives, the way that following Jesus has changed our perspective, the way we live. And so this paper airplane, you'll see in today's video as that message is shared, as, as the disciples are invited to be witnesses in the world. And finally, I invite you as you think about how we might be witnesses, how can we tell the story of the way that God has changed our lives? I invite you while you're at home with your family to create something like this, a poster to think through this calling to be witnesses in the world. And I invite you in each section with, with yourself or with your family to think through the different parts of the world, even in this moment, we might be Christ witnesses. How we might either reach out in service to others, either in our own household or further abroad, or how we might be witnesses in the way in which we tell the story that, of what God has done for us. An example of this has been our What Makes My Heart Sing segment that we've included in some of our Sundays to think through our faith story and to tell it, to share it with a family member or a friend.
So I invite you now to listen to our first lesson, the story of what happens to Jesus next, what happens to the disciples, and I wonder what we're now called to do in response. The reading is from the book of Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter. Peter. And John. John Penabianco. And James. James here, ready to pass the word. And Andrew, Philip. And I'm Philip. And Thomas. Thomas. Bartholomew. Bartholomew! And Matthew. Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus. James. And Simon, the Zealot. Simon. And Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary! As well as his brothers. Jesus' brother! Here ends the reading. According to John, Jesus looked up to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. 
So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me. Because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Last week I put out a request via social media asking folks here uh, locally if they had any matryoshka. Those are those nesting Russian dolls, like these up here on the, on the mantle. And I heard back from many folks offering use of their matryoshka. Um, but one person made it really simple for me. Chris Morrison, who um, opened the service with us today uh, by offering the collect, uh, said, I've got lots of matryoshka you can borrow. Um, in fact, I've been to Russia many times as a medical missionary, um, and um, I've got many that I've bought in there, and one that was given to me as a departing gift. This one, she told me, which contains 10 different sizes of these Russian nesting dolls. And I asked for these matryoshka because, for me, um, they are uh, the most helpful way of understanding what's going on in today's gospel story. This gospel story comes to us uh, here in the last Sunday of Easter. It's the Sunday where we commemorate uh, the end of the Easter season. And because it's right after the Feast of the Ascension, um, just uh, seven days before the Feast of the Pentecost, um, we often hear this story from John's Gospel, the 17th Gospel, which is called the High Priestly Prayer by scholars. And it's called that because Jesus prays uh, as a priest for his disciples that are with him and also his future disciples, you and me. And this prayer is a beautiful prayer, but it can be a bit confusing. Uh, with all of this, as I am in you, they are in me, uh, and, and we are in each other, and it gets confusing. I find it's difficult to track. This section isn't as difficult as some other sections of the prayer, but the way I tend to think about it is with the Matryoshka dolls. You see? Matryoshka uh, have this way of, of opening up and containing inside, oops, containing inside smaller ones. So I tend to think of this often as the way in which Jesus nestles us, and then we're nestled inside of Christ and inside of God. We find our way of being in the world by being nestled and comforted, um, perhaps sheltered in place, uh, as, as the current idiom goes, um, in God's loving embrace. And, and it says in this text that this is eternal life, to be wrapped in God's loving embrace. What that means is that we experience eternal life now, starting now and forever, that it's this sense of complete um, being wrapped up in who God is, that finding our identity in who God is and who Jesus is. We know who Jesus is because we, we know who God is because we know who Jesus is, the text tells us. And of course, these nestling dolls look the same. They are all dressed to be identical. And so there we are, all nestled together. But I don't think that's the end of the story. This is a beautiful picture of, of us inside of Jesus and Jesus held inside of God. But I think that becomes kind of an individualistic appraisal of this more communal story. Um, and luckily, the, the matryoshka that Chris let me borrow uh, have many additional sizes to them. 
So I think also what we're called to is to nestle inside uh, of ourselves others, people that we can care for and love, um, and, and to be, in a sense, like God, bringing people into our hearts, loving them eternally, giving our all for them, teaching them what we know to be true, holding them in our hearts and in our hands when we can. And as we go inside, that each person we carry inside of us, we can carry a little bit more. And then they, in turn, can hold someone else. Until we get down to a very point where uh, there is a little, little tiny person way into the future. And I think that's kind of the same person that Jesus prayed for many years ago. That, that little one that maybe is not even here yet, but in a generation yet to be born. Perhaps one of our grandchildren or great-grandchildren that we have yet to even fathom or conceive. But God's love is a circle in that way, that it doesn't end. You can see there's this sense of circularity, the sense of never-ending. That's what the disciples are all about. That's what God is all about. This is the Christian story, that we are wrapped in God's loving embrace now and forever that nothing we do can separate us from that embrace of our loving God. Today, tomorrow, or the next day, that we are wrapped in love, to be love, for a world desperately in need of love this day. Amen. to one another, remind us of the way in which we are all interconnected. And so we thought we would invite a couple of our families to create prayer chains as our prayers of the people, to offer prayers of connection and prayers for change. I pray for school. I pray for my f friend and family. And um, Sloan prayed for Miss Anderson. And she also prayed for the friends in her uh, class. And I prayed for all the people who are infected by the coronavirus. And I prayed for animals. And my mom prayed for um, the, um, I prayed for, for the first responders. To stay day, healthy. To stay healthy. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we pray for connection and change. Help me truly rest in you. 
Give me a future and hope, for I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Lord, your wisdom. Let your wisdom direct us. Unite us in faith to you. Help us connect in praise to you. Give us the strength to overcome. Lord, help us find an answer to you. Lord, help me turn to you for change. Of course, the classic prayer of connection that unites Christians across centuries and millennia and across the world is the Lord's Prayer. It's a prayer that prays for right, right relationships with each other, that we might forgive as we have been forgiven. And so we asked one of our youth to lead us in the Our Father and to make a visual representation of the way in which this prayer connects us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A few quick announcements before we go. We're currently working with the bishop. Uh, I'm on a strategic planning committee that is working to roll out the strategy for our returning to in-person worship. Um, we're not just thinking about technical things and checklists about how to keep people safe and spaces sanitary, but also about what might be the hidden opportunities of this moment, how we might better share the gospel, uh, how we might be witnesses to God's uh, emerging kingdom in our midst. But in the meantime, know that you're in our prayers. Thank you for joining us in today's worship service. We hope you have a blessed day, that you will not be left alone, and that you will find God's comfort today. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.